All right, let's continue with our user page and let's start with the search function, which is going to be very easy. And we just want to repeat the same process as we did in the previous videos. So in our user page component, I'm going to start by grabbing our parameters from the URL using the route function. So we will set this to route.params. Then we want to have our form. So we can set this to use form from inertia and we just want a search property. And the value of that would be from our URL parameters. Then we want a search function. And again, we want to submit this to the same route using the router function. So we can say router.get and the route we are on is user.show. Now this URL is expecting a user ID. So instead of passing user ID like this as a second argument, we want to pass an object and then in this object have our user parameter. So the value of this user must be this user ID. So we can save our props inside a variable and then pass it down here. So we can say user is going to be props.user.id. So notice we are doing this inside the route function, which is part of that Ziggy package. This route function allows us to have the parameters as key value pairs in this object, which would be the same as passing the parameter as a second argument. But make sure this key is the same as the parameter you specified in your route. So I said I want a user parameter, and that's why I am setting the key here to user. So that is our first parameter. Then we want a search parameter and we will set this to form.search and that is our search function. Now in our heading right here, we have a div for search and we need our input field and a button to clear the filters. So let's open our admin dashboard. We did this in previous videos and we can just copy this whole thing. So we can grab this div which wraps the whole form and the link and just copy it and go back to the user page and replace it with this div. So this is our div wrapper. Then we have a form that is being submitted to the search function and we have our input field. We need to import this. So in the script tag, let's just import that. And then we have a label on that an icon, the placeholder, the V model, everything stays the same. Now down to this link, we have our VF directive and the href that is going to admin index. But this time we want to go to user.show. And again, this is expecting a user ID. So we have the parameters, we have the search and page. We can also set the user to user.id. And the rest is going to be the same. So back to our website, I notice I have an error and that is coming from this misspelling. So I misspelled my form. Sorry about that and back to the website there we go it's fine now and if i add something here then it is in the parameters and you notice we still have the user id up there and if i delete this then it's gone now of course we need to filter these results based on this search input and we've already created filters for our listings so let's get rid of this one and go back to the project and i'm just going to open listings model first so in here we created our scope filter and we said if there was a search filter then search in the title and description and we can use this same filter in our admin controller and this is another benefit of creating our filters in a model instead of a controller so in our admin controller before this latest function i can add the filter function and then use the request helper function pass an array here and then the key which is search now again, since we are using some filters or query strings, let's also add this function at the very end. All right, back to the website. Again, let's search for something, for example, some random text. We don't have any value. Let's search for this phrase. And we have six results. Let's search for something else, maybe that is a longer text and press enter. Then we have five results. So our search function is working correctly. And I just noticed I forgot to import our pagination links in the previous video. Let's do that now. It is quite simple. We just have to import our pagination links. And then after our table closing tag, we can have a div with margin top six. And then in here, we will have our pagination links. So again, this is looking for a paginator and we can bind this to listings. All right, so now we have our paginations down here. And if we search for something like this, then we can see the number of results. All right, so that was easy. 
since we've done it multiple times. The next step is to have a toggle button right here, similar to what we did in the admin page to filter disapproved listings. So let's go back to the user page. And again, I'm going to copy the toggle button from admin dashboard. So we have this right here. I can copy the whole div and close this one. Then we have a div here that says toggle. I'm going to replace it with what we got from our admin dashboard. So this is our toggle approve listing button and we have our wrapper. Then we want to listen to this input field and the function that I'm going to use, I would call show disapproved and the parameter in our URL, I would call it disapproved. I can also copy this name and paste it for the ID and the for attribute of this label. And as the text of this label, I just want to say show disapproved listings. So everything is the same as our admin dashboard. The only thing that I changed is just names, the function name and the parameter in our URL. So let's create this function first under the search function in the script tag. I'm going to create that function and similar to toggle role in the admin dashboard, we want to see if this input field is checked or not. So let's accept the event. And again, we want to add an if else statement and see if our event target was checked, then we will submit a request through a get HTTP method to the same route. So I can use the route function and then the route, which is user show. And as a second argument in the route function, I will pass an object. We need to have a user. So I will set this to props user ID. We want to include the search, whatever we have. So we can say search is prams.search. Then we want to have a disapproved parameter, which I will set it to true. Then we can copy this router statement and paste it to the else block. And we just want to undo what we did up here. So everything stays the same, but we will set the disapproved to null. So notice this parameter is the same name that we are using on this input field. And we are binding that check attribute to that parameter. So if this is in our URL parameters, then this input field would be checked. So back to our website, here is our checkbox. If I click, we have disapproved equal to one. If I uncheck it, then it's gone. And again, we want to handle this in our Laravel application. So let's go back to the admin controller and we want to have a new filter in our listing model since this is a user's listing and we don't have an approved filter. So let's open our listing model and we just want to add another if statement here. So let's copy one of these if statements in the scope filter function in our listing model. And I will just paste it underneath and I want to check if we have a disapproved key in our filters array then we will return the results where the approved column is false. So very simple, we are returning the disapproved listings if we have a disapproved parameter in the URL. Now back to the admin controller, we just want to add that key to this array of requests. So here we can say disapproved. And now let's go back to the website. Let's go to the admin page, open this one. Since there is one disapproved listing here, then select this checkbox. We can only see that listing. If I deselect it, then it's back to normal. The next step is to toggle the approved state of a listing. So again, let's go back to our project and we want to have a new function in our admin controller, which I would call it approve. So let's create a public function approve or whatever name we want to use. And we want to accept a listing since we are going to modify a listing and I need to import this. And for now, we just want to die and dump that listing. Then we want to create a route for this. So back to our web.php and the admin group, we want to have another put route. So let's say route put and for the URI, I would go to listing and then the ID of the listing and the text approve. Then the function that is going to handle it again, we called it approved and I would call this one admin approve. So this is our last route for this group. So now let's use this admin approve in our user page component. So in our table, we have a button here that is showing those icons and on the button tag itself, I can use the click dot prevent and I will create a function here, which I would call it toggle approve. 
and we want to submit a request to our approve route which is expecting a listing id so i'm just going to pass the listing object to this function now let's go up to the script tag and i'm going to create that toggle approve function which is accepting a listing so i am accepting the listing as a parameter and let's just submit this through a put method to our admin approve route which is expecting a listing id so i can say listing.id now let's see if this works back to our website let's go to the admin page and click on this one we get the information about that listing and under attributes we can see the id of the listing is three the user id is one which is our admin now before submitting this to our laravel backend i want to have a confirm message but i want that message to be dynamic so i'm going to create an msg or message variable inside this function and i will just set this to a ternary operator and say if our listing approved was true then say disapprove this listing question mark if it was false that means the listing is disapproved already we want to approve it so approve this listing question mark then after that i will have an if statement and i will use the confirm method then use our msg variable in here which would be one of these strings then i will move this router statement inside if block and now back to our website if i press on these buttons we get disapprove this listing if i say okay then we will see our die and dump and if i say cancel then nothing happens now in our admin controller we want to handle this so we can grab the listing and update a property or a value on this particular listing so we want to grab the approved column and the value of this is going to be the opposite of whatever we have because I want to toggle that value. So I can set this to listing approved and then negate this statement. So whatever value we have under this column, just negate it and set it as the new value. Let's see if this works. So this first one is approved. I can click. It says disapprove this listing. I say OK, then it is disapproved. I can turn it back then it's approved so i can go back and forth just by clicking on that and we can just disapprove bunch of listings and just show the disapproved ones and apply the filters now let's go back to the approve function and we want to return back with a status session message so let's say return back with status and again i want to make this a status message conditional so i will pass double quotations and say listing approved or disapproved successfully now to get that dynamic value i will just have an msg variable up here and again i will set this to a ternary operator so we will check if the listing approved was true then say approved otherwise say disapproved and use that for this status message so now we have a status message let's send this as a prop to our component and that is to our show method so right here i can add status set this to session a status like this then go to our user page and accept that as a prop let's import our session messages and use it somewhere in our markup so under the head tag I will use session messages and bind the status to the prop we just created again back to our website if i approve a listing then we see that message so now we just want to repeat this same process in the show component because we have another button there which does the same action so for example this first post if i go there we have this button and we can go back to our component just copy this toggle approve function then open our show component and then in the script tag paste it under a delete listing and on this button which we've already created we just want to add the at click event listener prevent the default just to be sure we are not submitting anything else and use the toggle approve function which we have up here now this is looking for a listing and we do have one listing in this component we can simply pass that down here so we don't need a parameter i can delete this from parameters and add the props variable before listing approve same thing down here and now if we go back to our detailed page and press disapprove we see disapprove this listing i say okay then it is approved and i can switch it back and forth
Now we could also include the session messages on this page, but I think it's not necessary. So we know that in our approve function, we are returning back with a status message. So that would be this page. But since it is quite clear and we can see the changes right on that page, I think it is not necessary. But if you wanted to, it is very simple. You just have to repeat the same process as we did with this user page right here. Now, as I mentioned before, we can also have policies to protect these actions if the user is not an admin. For example, this last one is about a listing and we already have a listing policy. In our listing policy, which we created in previous videos, we have view, create and modify. We can have another function here and I will call it approve. So we need to accept a user and a listing since we want to approve a listing. Sorry, this should be listing. And we want to return true if this user is the admin and they are authorized to modify or approve a listing. So I can say user and remember we created a function for this and we called it is admin. So we can simply use it and that's all we have to do. Now to use this one, we can go back to admin controller and use the gate facade and then the authorize function, which is looking for an ability in this case is to approve a listing and the arguments which is going to be our listing. So if the user is not admin, then none of this would happen. We can also have a user policy for this role function. So let's also create that, which is going to be very quick and easy. So in the terminal, we can say PHP artisan make policy and we will call this user policy. Now we can go back to our project. Under policies folder, we have our user policy. In here, we can delete this default function and create our own function. I would call this modify a role for example and again we want to accept the user that is going to be our only model and simply we want to check if the user is admin and in our admin controller in the role function we can again use the gate facade and then authorize the ability is modify role and the argument is user all right so that is our admin controller there is one last thing I want to add before we can wrap this up. So if we go back to our project and we have three suspended users. Now as the admin, I want to see what's going on with these users. For example, I will go to this user's listings and I want to view this listing. So I click on this link and I get unauthorized, even though this listing is approved. The same goes for this other one, which is disapproved. And this is because of the policies we applied in our listing policy. So we said if the user role is suspended, then that listing cannot be viewed and these other policies we have here. So what we need to do is to exclude admin from all these restrictions. And we can simply do that by creating a special function in our listing policy or any policy. Before all the other functions, I'm going to create another one and the name of this one must be before. So this is a special name that will override all these other abilities. We need to pass the user as a parameter to this before function and we want to return null if our criteria fails. So in here we want to check once again if our user is admin and if that's true we would simply return true. So just by adding this function we are overriding all these other actions and we are saying if the user is admin then ignore all of these restrictions and allow the admin do whatever they want to do. Otherwise return null that means this is not going to affect any other user. So back to the project, if we reload our website, even though this user is suspended and their listing is disapproved, I can still view that listing, I can still approve it, and I can perform actions as the admin. So now the admin has the ability to view, create, and modify and approve the listings or the users without any restrictions. So if you want to remove the restrictions of policies for your admin users, you can use the before function in the policy and return true if a condition is met. And with that, my friends, this project is done. We covered a lot of concepts in this full project. And I have to say this is my biggest project so far that I had to record and edit. And it took me a lot of time and effort to just put this all together. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this has been helpful. And I also understand this is not perfect. I may have 
made some problems or mistakes along the way and I didn't even notice them and I'm sure there are better ways or more elegant ways to achieve the same results but we still learned a lot through this project so I want to thank you all for your support and staying with me through this project and I will see you guys in the next videos